good morning students today i am going to teach you about steam nozzle and here in this we have to understand first what is a nozzle right so see here the nozzle is a duct of varying cross section okay see this picture this is a duct may be circular or it may be rectangular or square mainly it is circular in cross section but it is having varying cross section okay cross sectional area varying cross sectional area in which velocity increases with corresponding drop in pressure okay so as the inlet the area is higher when goes on the area becomes reduced when the cross sectional area of the duct reduces the pressure will be reduces when pressure reduces the velocity is increasing so here velocity increases with the corresponding drop in pressure due to the pressure drop the velocity of the fluid particle increases in the duct okay this is what a nozzle okay its main function is to produce a jet of steam at high velocity okay at high velocity it is mainly used in turbines okay turbine impulse turbines in order to increase the velocity to the maximum level we uses nozzles steam nozzles which works on steam right steam turbines gas turbines jet engines rocket motors flow measurement and any other applications here nozzle is used types of nozzle we have three types of nozzle convergent divergent and convergent divergent so here the first type is convergent nozzle convergent means inlet area is higher outlet area is lower so converging the area is converging to reduced cross sectional area the next type is divergent nozzle so here divergent nozzle means inlet area is lesser value the outlet area is goes on increasing it's a divergent nozzle then the third type is convergent and divergent nozzle so it has two sections so first section it is a convergent nozzle and after that it is a divergent nozzle so the connection point the throat it is having a lesser cross sectional area in the throat the section so this is the throat section so it has an inlet section throat section and outlet section it is a convergent divergent nozzle type flow of steam through nozzles steam nozzle generally it is an adiabatic flow it is assumed as adiabatic flow that means no heat loss happens so q is equal to heat transfer is equal to zero so insulating materials are uh, spread around the nozzle so it uh, don't allows it won't allow the flow of heat from the from the system to the surrounding so heat transfer is zero and also work done also zero only the velocity change happens no work is produced in the nozzle velocity of steam let us understand and we will derive a relationship for what is the velocity of the steam in the nozzle for that we are what we are going to do is we consider unit mass flow of steam through the nozzle unit mass flow mass flow rate is unit that means 1 kg per second m is equal to 1 kg per second and we use c1 and c2 as velocity at inlet and exit of the steam and h1 and h2 are enthalpy of the steam enthalpy at inlet and the enthalpy at outlet so it is specific kilo joule per kilogram value for steady flow process we are assuming that the flow takes place in a steady flow 
steady flow manner steady flow means the flow characteristics will not change with the time with the time the flow characteristic will not change the flow happens in a steady state and here we can use the formula steady flow energy equation on that we use only h1 and velocity potential difference will not be entertained in this nozzle let's say horizontal inlet and outlet sections will be in the same height so potential energy will not be considered so just heat enthalpy plus of m v m v square that is c square is equal to h2 plus of m c square plus losses losses when we are neglecting the losses we will understand uh, we will derive the formula for c we substitute so finally we got the formula of c2 is equal to c1 plus 2000 into h1 h2 and uh, when considering steam nozzle compared to the outlet velocity inlet velocity is very less thereby we can neglect c1 also when we are neglecting c1 the formula become c2 into root of 2000 into h1 minus h2 so root of 2000 is equal to 44.72 thereby the formula is this this is the velocity of steam at the outlet in steam nozzle then let us find out the mass flow rate through the nozzle here we assume the adiabatic flow right adiabatic there is no heat loss so here adiabatic means pv power n is equal to constant if it is adiabatic we use gamma so here for steam nozzles we use it as polytropic process with the polytropic index as n is equal to 1.135 for saturated steam the saturated steam is flowing through the nozzle means we can use the n value as this if it is a superheated steam we use n as adiabatic index n as 1.3 so small p1 is the initial pressure and p2 is the final pressure outlet steam velocity v1 means specific volume that means volume per kilogram of the steam v1 v2 are the specific volume and c1 c2 are the velocity of the steam at the inlet and exit for deriving we use the polytropic formula work done during the polytropic process we already know that n by n minus 1 into p1 v1 minus p2 v2 then we know gain in kinetic energy is equal to work done during the polytropic process okay so gain in kinetic energy change in kinetic energy c2 minus okay for per kilogram right therefore we neglect m we didn't consider m so c2 square by 2 minus c1 square by 2 will be equal to the work done so we equate these two things and we use the polytropic relationship p1 v1 power n is equal to p2 v2 and using that relation we find the value of c2 like this then mass flow rate we say will be equal to volume by specific volume right volume by specific volume volume means area into velocity of the stream right area of the section into velocity of the stream at outlet divided by the specific volume we will get the mass flow rate we substitute the values of c2 here we got the formula of ms like this so using this formula we can able to find the mass flow rate of fluid flowing through the nozzle and for substituting the value of v2 v1 v2 relation from polytropic relations we got the value of from v1 from inlet specific volume itself we can find the mass flow rate with this formula then consider condition for maximum discharge what's the condition to find the maximum discharge so for maximum discharge we have to differentiate the mass flow rate okay discharge mass flow rate this is the discharge right so we differentiate with respect to the pressure gradient p2 by p1 we get to zero we will get a relations that relation gives the condition for the 
maximum discharge. So this finally we got the relationship P2 by P1 is equal to 2 by n plus 1 the whole power n by n minus, minus 1. This is the condition for maximum discharge. Okay. Just we substitute instead of P, uh, P2 by P1 we substitute this. We get the relations like this M max. We will substitute in for saturated steam n equal to 1.135 and superheated 1.3. Well, substituting these values n here, we got the value of m max as uh, 0.6356a into root of p1 by v1. For superheated steam, we substitute the value of n as 1.3. We got the maximum discharge formula as 0 0.667. Then for adiabatic flow, isentropic flow, gamma will be 1.4. Okay, while substituting this, we got the value of maximum discharge as 0 0.685 into A into root of P1 by V1. The nozzle efficiency or effect of friction in a nozzle. Okay, effect of friction. Due to friction with nozzle surfaces, the pr pressure drop will be happening. Due to that, the velocity, the efficiency of the nozzle will be reduced. Internal, internal fluid friction due to shock losses, shock, sudden change in pressure, here will losses will happen. Then we will understand the form, the nozzle efficiency formula. Nozzle efficiency, so here this is the HS plot, enthalpy and the enthalpy diagram. So here, nozzle inlet is at the point A, right? For isentropic flow, the exit velocity will exit condition point is B. Okay, for saturated line, it is exit point is B less. Okay, so here nozzle efficiency means coefficient of the nozzle, which is equal to actual enthalpy drop divided by isentropic enthalpy drop. For isentropic means A to B, right? So, H2 minus H1. Actual enthalpy, actual point is at B dash, right? From A to B dash. So, H3 minus H1. H1 minus H3. Subtract from the higher value to lower value. We will get the efficiency of the nozzle, which is H1 minus H3 by H1 minus H2. Then critical pressure ratio, the pressure ratio at which maximum discharge happens, maximum discharge happens in the nozzle. So this is the pressure ratio we already derived, right? So we will substituting the N value as for saturated stream 1.135, we got the pressure ratio as P2 by P0, 0 0.577. For superheated steam, we use N as 1.3. The pressure ratio, critical pressure ratio is 0 0.546. For gases, have adiabatic flow, adiabatic isentropic, N is equal to 0 1.4. While substituting, we get the pressure ratio, critical pressure ratio as 0 0.5282. Then metastable flow or supersaturated flow of steam in a nozzle, super saturated. Okay. When superheated steam expand in nozzle, the cons condensation occurs in the nozzle, right? Condensation converting into liquid state. Since steam has more velocity, the condensation will not take place at the expected rate, right? So the equilibrium between liquid and vapor phase is delayed and the steam continues to expand in dry state. Okay. The steam in such a setup condition is said to be supersaturated or metastable flow. So we understand. We expand in the saturated state, that is supersaturated state. Effect of supersaturation due to supersaturation. The drainage fraction of the steam is increased 
and the entropy and the specific volume of the steam are increased exit velocity of the steam is reduced mass of steam discharge is also increased let us understand one problem let us solve one problem on steam nozzle so here steam approaches a nozzle with a velocity of 200 meter per second so inlet velocity is 200 meter per second and the pressure is 4 bar and the inlet drainage fraction also 0 0.98 so inlet conditions given isentropic expansion so it is given as isentropic flow of nozzle the pressure of the exit is 1 bar exit condition is 1 bar determine the change in the enthalpy and drainage fraction of the steam using Molier diagram also calculate the exit velocity of the steam nozzle and the area of the exit nozzle and also they are giving the mass flow rate as 0 0.8 kilogram per second so we found the given data so inlet conditions they give inlet velocity inlet pressure and inlet dryness fraction and outlet condition pressure will be given in the question just what we we locate it in the molier chart okay molier chart hs plot right so here first condition pressure will be there and a dryness fraction x1 will be there with 4 bar pressure pressure line constant pressure line you mark at the point of dryness fraction 0 0.98 we got a point 1 okay 1 then the second condition here it is isentropic no it is given in the questions so entropy same so we can write a vertical line okay a vertical line from 1 and the exit condition is 1 bar right P2 is 1 bar, so 1 bar line, constant pressure line, light, 1 bar line, it will meet at one point, the vertical line, that point is the second point. Now you can take the details, take the values of the enthalpy corresponding to 1 and corresponding to 2, and we can find the, all the other values, entropy and everything, we can get it from the molar diagram itself. I write the values of the H1. From the first condition, second condition, H2 and V2 also we found. And also X drainage fraction also get it from the second point in the molar diagram. Okay. For exit velocity, we know the formula. This, you substitute here, we will get the value of exit velocity. And exit area, for area, we can use this formula. With this formula, we will substitute, we will get the exit area also. So, these are all the answers. Then let us understand another problem. Dry saturated stream at okay, dry saturated condition that is x equal drainage fraction is equal to 1 at 3.5 bar initial pressure is applied to a convergent divergent nozzle whose throat section is 4.4 and exit pressure is 1.1 1 bar. Determine the maximum possible discharge through the nozzle per minute and area of the nozzle at the exit when the flow is maximum. Also, assume that flow is frictionless and adiabatic. So, inlet conditions, pressure is given, throat sectional area is given, outlet pressure. <coughs> Dry saturated steam, we use this polytropic formula. So, we already know the critical pressure ratio formula. Pt by P1 is equal to 0 0.555. So from that we find the pressure at the throat section Pt. It is 2 bar. So just you draw in the Molier diagram. Okay, Molier diagram, HS diagram. So first point is dry saturated, right? So x equal to 1 and for 3.5 pressure we will draw. Then for adiabatic process we can draw a vertical line. When it is 2 bar we can fix the throat point. When it is 1.1 but is given the question right exit pressure so we will get the point of 2 so from the molar diagram itself we can find all the property values these are all the property values we can find it from molar diagram right then we can find h1 as it is a dry saturated stream we can use this one hf plus hfg sf also s1 also then s1 and s2 are same right so we are equating, we get the value of xt, drainage fraction at t, at the, truss, uh, at the throat section. And ht also we can find, so it is a dry saturated, it's a, it's a wet steam, right? So we can use hf plus x into hfg formula. 
then specific volume also we can get it from the relationship entropy at the third section also same with the entropy we can find the exit x2 drainus fraction at the exit of the steam and then velocity of the steam at the throat we can use this formula h1 minus h2 formula at the exit we can use this formula h1 minus h2 formula maximum possible discharge we already know the formula right so with this if i substitute the values we got the value of maximum velocity area of the nozzle at the exit exit nozzle area so already in the previous problem also we used this formula so we got the value of area of the exit of the nozzle